It's been almost a year since Mazda introduced their latest BT50. And when I say latest, I mean kind of dressed up. This, this was the Pangolin that they launched in about November of 2020. Now, it still resembles, obviously, the much older BT50. Everything is the same. It's got a 3.2-liter engine. But in this particular one, the Pangolin, they added just more stuff to make it look off-road. Now, for Mazda fanatics out there who have been dying to see the new BT50, and especially those that are in the Philippines that want it here immediately, well, the time has finally come. Because now we move on to the 2022 BT50. And I got to tell you off the bat, this is the first time I'm actually looking at it and it looks actually pretty darn good. I'm gonna start off by telling you just exactly what is going to be available in the country, the Philippines more specifically. So there are gonna be a total of three variants, okay? There's gonna be the four x four automatic, that over there is the four x two automatic that Joey's checking out, and then there's going to be a four x two manual transmission. Now all of them will carry the exact same engine, which is a three liter. Now it's obviously gonna be, uh, rather it's obviously an open secret, that the engine inside these automobiles share the same things as with the D-MAX, um, meaning fuel efficiency, power output, we believe. Uh, we don't have the exact specs as of yet. It's kind of hush-hush, but I, what I can tell you is that, like I said, it's obviously an open secret. So the same engine is going to be found on all three models. Now, the difference being in this top of the line right here, and like I said, that one's the four by two, are there are certain there are going to be certain ad uh, additions to those the first 200 customers of Mazda now 200 customers in total is what I'm talking about those additions are going to be number one this false skid plate that's found underneath number two are these covers found above the wheel wells these black covers looks actually pretty good and number three there's actually a bed cover that comes with this particular automobile uh, that's going to be available for the first 200 customers of any model or other, uh, yeah, any model, any variant. Uh, whether Mazda will continue to sell those products that are available as add-ons to the automobile after the 200 still remains to be seen, but we figure that why not, right? It's just going to be at an added cost. At what cost, we're actually not sure. Let's start with the exterior design of the Mazda. So first thing I want to point out is how much it actually resembles a CX-8, a CX-9, and even a Mazda CX-5, because You've got this shape right here, and it looks very, very Mazda. In fact, if you were to take out the badge, it obviously looks extremely Mazda on its own. It's got some very Kodo design going on there. And then you've got the shape of the hood, which kind of like bends down, like most Mazda products. These accents here and on the other side, sort of like pointed to the center, and it looks really great. Again, I hate to repeat myself, but very Mazda. The one thing that I also want to point out is that obviously you've seen the fact that these are projectors and they look absolutely great is that there are tiny DRLs found inside apart from the halos that are here and when they're on they look so good and, and the only sad thing is is that they only come on as DRLs so when you're actually driving the automobile with lights on they kind of come off well for, for the, the, the little light anyway and I wish that they would stay on. Also, you'll notice that the indicators are no longer up found up front, but rather down below. This, I'm really not too sure about because it is quite low. Even though it's a tall automobile, I'm kind of thinking that the indicators should have been up front. Let's take a quick look at what's under the hood. Let me just pop that for you. Now, as I mentioned, there is the same engine that's found on all three models, be it the 4x4 automatic, 4x2 automatic, or the 4x2 manual transmission. Now, it's a 3-liter that produces roughly 187 horses and 450 newton meters of torque. Again, I must stress, we have no idea just yet whether the fuel consumption figures of this will differ from the automobile that shares the exact same engine, but we are dying to find out. There is no sky active found in this particular diesel engine, unlike you would on the Mazda CX-5 diesel and the Mazda 6 diesel engines. So no sky active on this guy. So we're having, we, we got our fingers crossed, hoping that this is actually a pretty fuel efficient engine. Before we go any further, I also want to point out that you, there are sensors on the top of the line found here, here, here. There's like a myriad of sensors, including those that you can find on the windshield, which is part of the ADAS or Advanced Driver 
assisted system. I had to look over and make sure that I got it right. So it's got a lot of sensors, including uh, cross traffic alert. You've got blind spot monitors, uh, aut automatic braking, and, and a myriad of other stuff that we'll get into once we get into the automobile. I want to point out, Jack, can you move here to this area here? And I want you to look at the car from dead up front. Look at it. It's got such an aggressive stance to it. Partly because also this particular part here and obviously on the other side makes the car look like it's wider. While the lights are actually very, very skinny. It's got a very, uh, Joey, what's the term that you use? Imposing, that's right. It does have a very imposing look when you're looking at it dead center. And we also figured that the chrome accents here when the lights are on actually add to that imposing look. Like it's got, eh, like it's got baggage underneath the eyes, like Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton. And when it looks at you, it's like very, mm, very imposing, which is great to have on a pickup truck. And yet, it's got finesse and class, I think, simply because of the front grille. Enough about that, let's go on to the side. You've got repeaters on the side mirror, a step board for all the models. It's just different in style. You know, uh, the, the step board on the four x two looks a little, less, a little less garnished, a little less dressed, but there's a step board nonetheless. Uh, you've got a button to open the, the car, so long as you have the key fob inside your, your pocket. And then you move on down the line. Oh, the wheels, for the 4x4, you have 18-inch wheels. On the 4x2 and on the manual 4x2, you have reduced size wheels into 17s. But to be honest with you, the, I like the wheels of the 4x2 a little better than that of the 4x4 because I find these a little too big for my taste. I don't know why, maybe it's just personal preference. And you may want to also know that while there are discs up front, these are drum at the rear. Let's move on to the back. This is the bed cover that I was referring to that is gonna be available for the first 200 customers of Mazda in total, not 200 for the 4x4 or 200 for the 4x2 in total, which is when you open her up, you give it a tug here and a tug here and it rolls up and then it rolls all the way until you clap it or rather clasp it. So that's actually a nice little addition. Again, only for the first 200 customers and whether they're gonna make that available to the public I'm sure they will but they just haven't said anything yet at the tail you've got your little camera here as your reverse camera and of course a badge that shows you that obviously it's a 4x4 Jack why don't you go around to this side and I'll meet you inside the automobile initial impressions on the inside is actually it's very calming uh, much like uh, the D-Max, it's, it's, it looks very soft. It looks, uh, it looks soft to the touch, yet firm when you sit down. I like it. Uh, the colors are actually pretty similar to that of the D-Max as well. I know that I make a lot of reference to the D-Max. How can we not? This car is actually based on that particular automobile. So there's going to be obviously a lot of uh, similarities, including the speakers that are found on the ceiling. So that's one thing. One thing that isn't a similarity is, well, there's actually a secret compartment that can be found underneath the seat. So for you weekend warriors out there that want to hide, I don't know, a couple of pew pews, then that's a spot that you can do it. Or maybe we shouldn't have told anyone because now everybody knows. Oh, poop. Anyway, toys back here include a center armrest with two cup holders. You've got air vents found up front, which is nice. A USB charging port, which is a 2.1 amperes, and then bottle holders and speakers on either door. Here is what it looks like when a short person like me gets in. Now, this is obviously my normal driving position as I moved it a little bit. So the space is actually pretty nice. Um, elbow room, definitely for two adults, a third, might be a bit tight and a third person might have to wear a parka because then they will be facing the air vents themselves quite nice the bolstering is actually pretty good too i like it it's kind of square but it's 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 elegant and rugged at the same time i don't know how that can be in in one sentence but that's what it is and then also you've got parcel hooks that can carry up to four kilograms there headroom's okay i mean yeah, I noticed that the seat is actually a bit longer than most pickup trucks in the sense that, well, yeah, ha, 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 I'm a short guy, but um, my calf muscles are actually hitting the back, uh, the, the back of my calf muscles are already hitting the chair where normally I'm able to pull my legs in a little bit closer to my body here. There's a bit of a resistance. So for much taller passengers, actually, this might actually be very comfortable. Anyway, let's move to the front. 
Okay, so up front, first thing that I'm gonna let you know is that the driver has power seats, just manual seats for the passenger. So driving and in, getting into your driving position is very, very easy. And also it is a telescopic steering wheel, which I like very much. <laughs> That's very nice. Okay, getting in here, uh, the first thing that I noticed with the dash is that, again, it's got some similarities to the D-Max, but it's actually flatter. Uh, it doesn't have a, a hump in the center. And uh, while the shapes, or rather the, the, the layout is roughly the same, you've got different shapes that can be found in here. It's, uh, it's simpler, but it's as rich. You know, uh, when we first entered the, the, the interior of the D-Max, uh, we were very impressed by it. Like it was a huge step away from uh, the previous generations. Inside this Mazda, I gotta tell you that we are impressed with the interior, but it's not as if that we were blown away. Only because, well, it's a Mazda, so we're actually used to the, the plushness and the richness that you will find inside a Mazda. So this thing here, rather, what, we, what we're gonna say is that it's not such a far step from the products that are available from Mazda because, well, it's the steering wheel feels good, the leather is plush to the touch. There's still some piano black plastics which unfortunately it will scratch when you breathe on it kind of a thing the infotainment well we can't show you until we start the engine can we and maybe we can turn on a little air because it's getting quite warm in here uh the infotainment in here is a nine inch screen while the four by two variant automatic and the four by two manual carry a seven inch screen we're gonna play around with this. It's actually very intuitive, very crisp, very sharp. And it also has, I might add, wireless Apple CarPlay. No wireless Android Auto as of yet, which kind of sucks because I'm an Android user. But at the very least, there is a wireless Apple CarPlay. A first in its class, really. The instrument cluster are two analog gauges. You got a tachometer and speedometer on your right hand and a small little chip computer in the center. Nothing nouveau about that. Very basic, really. Very reassuring, really, because it's a pickup truck and you don't want anything to go wrong when you're out in the wilderness doing God knows what. Also, to the infotainment system, this is developed by Mazda themselves. They didn't borrow this from anybody else. And now we're hooked up via wireless Apple CarPlay. It's actually pretty seamless. We're hooked up to Jack's phone. We're gonna go to Spotify. This is developed in-house. And uh, like I mentioned, one thing though, Unlike the other more premium products of Mazda, they carry Bose speakers. This guy doesn't have Bose speakers, but there are eight speakers in this thing, uh, six all around the cabin and then two on the roof. And I wanted to point that out. Oh, by the way, YouTube, this is no copyright music, so please don't unmonetize us. I just wanted to show just exactly how good the music is in here, or rather the sound, and it's pretty darn good. Now in terms of tech, there is of course the ADAS or the Advanced Driver Assist System. I got that right, yes I did. Which includes, like I said, forward collision warning, you've got blind spot monitoring and a host of other things which include, you ready? <gasps> the Advanced Driver Assist System or ADAS includes adaptive cruise control, autonomous emergency braking, lane departure warning, automatic high beam headlights and blind spot monitoring to name a few. Cubby hold spaces up front include ball holders on either door, which can easily carry a 500 ml bottle. Then you've got two spaces here in the center. You got a cubby hole here. You have a compartment found down here and another compartment found up here. What they have done away with is a compartment here up front, which is not necessarily the best place to put things because you can fry stuff like tocino or tapa in there underneath the Philippine sun. So they got rid of that. Uh, I will tell you this. Much like, again, the D-Max, we were so completely impressed about the interior of the car that we couldn't wait to get it on the road and see exactly how it felt like. It's the exact same way here. However, I must point out that obviously this is a pickup truck. It is currently the only product that Mazda Philippines brings in that sits on a ladder platform. Everything else that Mazda currently brings in is of course a unibody. So of course the departure in ride from their older products or rather their current products to this product will be completely different but with hopes that it actually rides a heck of a lot better than what we got out of the D-Max when we first got into that automobile and then we're kind of let down when we got on the road. So this we're kind of hoping for a much better ride. 
But again, spec stuff like uh, fuel consumption figures and exactly what sits underneath this car, we don't have it yet, but we, will, but we definitely will during our review of this car. Got it? Good. While there are very many questions people will want to ask, the two big questions that they've got, thanks Joey, are color and price when it comes to buying an automobile. Colors, I can tell you that it will come with a plethora of colors, include concrete gray, gun blue metallic, volcanic red, silver ingot, true black, and icy white. Second is obviously the price. While at this very moment, as we're shooting it, we haven't been given the price points just yet, but we have been told that it will be very competitive to the D-Max. Competitive pricing, they said, and they meant it. Prices are on fire with the Mazda BT 54x2 manual transmission at 1,390,000 Philippine pesos. The 4x2 automatic, 1,430,000 Philippine pesos. And the top of the line 4x4 automatic at 1,790,000 Philippine pesos. Now, while prices are subject to change depending on worldwide material availability, Mazda Philippines wants to do their best to keep the prices as competitive and consumer shocking for as long as possible. In any case, we cannot wait to get this car out for a proper review, and I hope that you guys will join us then. See you soon. By the way, one last thing, guys, is that free gasoline there? Because I want to know.